Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first opening match of PigFest 3.0. We have one of the highest seeded players in the entire tournament, of course. It's none other than Onside Gaming's Maru. Runner up to the recent world championship and a man who, if he can win this match, may have revenge or a chance at it in the next match. But for now, standing in front of him is the up-and-comer, the young gun, young Nikita, a.k.a. Team Liquid Skillis. Young player hailing from Russia and uh, recently uh, living in the Netherlands. Apparently, I just found out literally 30 seconds before hopping into this game that this was, in fact, uh, he, he's just moved out of the Team Liquid House. Him and Rainer have moved in together. They have their own apartment. And that's going to be a passionate team of young guns who want to just play StarCraft all day and drink beers all night. Let's be real. Let's be real. They're going to have some social times as well. There are nerds that just practice, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping Rainer has a positive impact on Skillis with the socialization aspect and the, you know, getting him out there, meeting some ladies and whatnot. And, and hopefully Skillis rubs off with his, un, uh, you know, just absolutely ridiculous work ethic. But for now, Maru's going for a proxy barracks. It's not a very far out proxy barracks. It's more just a hidden barracks, which is really good if your opponent scouts, because they'll be confused. They'll think, oh God, it's proxy. Skillis is not scouting. Skillis is opening up really greedy this game. I love it. I think this is fantastic. Cybercore before Nexus, but he's got to watch out for the bunker. Uh-oh. Skillis doesn't see it, guys. The SCVs just skipped Pi. Pylon and Nexus does not have good vision while they're building. That bunker will get up. Now, the pylon's on the natural, so it's not the end of the world. He can, of course, build a shield battery down there. But an adept first is not really what you want in this scenario. Uh, obviously, it can't really fight a bunker that well. You can go across the map and try to cancel the command center. But Maru most likely builds that command center on the high ground, not giving an opportunity for Skillis uh, to realize what's up. So Skillis definitely wants to build a stalker after this. Adept, the second one. Let's see what happens. Starts another Adept. Reaper's already in here, though. The longer you delay him scouting this, the better this is. And the Adept comes in behind. Gonna have to cancel that Adept. No, too love, too far along. Skillis says, screw it. I'm just gonna make a battery and defend this with Adepts. Maybe build a Stalker on the next one. Stargate is underway for Skillis right now. Maru, of course, coming in as a big favorite. Maru puts the command center on the natural, realizing the Adept is pinned here. Is that too ballsy a play, guys? Maru may be getting a little bit overly optimistic. Uh, don't get me wrong. Terran players that know when they can take risks are uh, very powerful. That SCV barely dodges that second Adept shot there. This Adept's going to get an SCV kill. That's a big mistake for him. And look at that. Oh, SCV's going to go down. Nice catch. Now, you know there's a Cyclone on the way of Skillis, so of course you're going to just get that Adept out of there. But getting an SCV, delaying the command center is big because, look, Maru's supply blocked on 31. It's not a big supply block, but... It is definitely something that affects him. His depot does finish. And here we go. Oh, look at that, guys. That probe got focus fired, but Skillis pulled it back. Skillis is showing very good handling of this situation. And now that the Stalker's here, he's going to try and focus down that SCV as well. Maru keeps focusing the probes, looking for a mistake from Skillis. Skillis is really quick today, though. And for those who uh, did just tune in or are watching on YouTube, you might not have heard, Skillis won the coin flip. So we're starting here on Central US server. So he's going to have server advantage in this game. We'll go West Game 2 and Game 4. And it will be decided on Game 5 if we get there on Central US server. Now the bunker finally goes down, but he salvages it. Loses the SCV. The Reaper's like, hey, let me get that kill. Finally, finally, the Phoenix deal with this. But Skillis has been here many times before. This is Terran's favorite opening, I can tell you. They love doing this. And uh, the Cyclone actually has a kill. Which I'm curious about, because only one probe went down. I guess he was just sending a scouting probe out. That's a third Cyclone build. Maru's... Oh, Maru's doing a Cyclone Marine shove, guys. He's going to go for a crazy Mass Marine Cyclone attack. If Skillis pumps some mortals, he's going to be fine. If he pumps some mortals out of that Robo, pumps Gateway units here. He's got a second Gateway. Third Gateway would be nice. Get out. Uh oh get out of there. Maru with the quick double lock. Almost gets a Phoenix kill. Does survive for now. But remember, Phoenix are mostly hit points. They don't have that many shields. So if you lose all your hit points like that, you're only going to regen 60 shields max, which means that's a maximum 80 hit point Phoenix. Three Cyclones, pack of Marines, and a medevac coming forwards across this map. Maru is basically saying, I don't respect... Uh, I don't I, I, I don't respect the, 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 the fear here of this opponent. I'm just going to rush in and try to kill you. The Immortal's getting chronoed. There is a battery there. Another battery on the natural would be helpful. These Cyclones are going to really be annoying... Uh, I feel like with four Phoenix, obviously you can do some stuff, but oh my god, oh, those Cyclone lock-ons are painful, dude. But, you know what? Nikita cancelled his third. I'm pretty sure he started one and then cancelled Actually, he never even started it. 
which is really good for him. So he just stays on two bays, makes the Immortal, makes some more units. Losing a Gateway is not the end of the world. He's got a Robo Bay. And if Maru overstays his welcome, the Phoenix can pick these units up and smash them. Skillis is actually in a pretty good spot right now. This is a perfect time to go out there for a break on this. And as those Cyclones keep getting picked up, the Marines get cleansed from this map. Good focus fire on the Marines. Very good focus fire there. But the Phoenix are going to hunt this whole push down and Skillis with a fantastic start. But surprise Liberator, Skillis not sleeping at all though. He's going to lose maybe one or two probes at most. The Liberator gets nothing. The Phoenix shut it down. Skillis starting off this series in fire, uh, in fine, fine form. And I feel like, I, I, you know, it's been a year of me hyping up Skillis. One year straight. I, I, I swear, guys, he really kicked off in about March, April last year. And, and people have been doubting it, saying he's not that great, Pig, he's not that great. And I've been saying, guys, just wait. It takes time before you beat the best players in the world. But he's kicking off this series solid, confident, comfortable. And he looked a little sleepy. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of morning time for those European pro gamers. Maru, this is kind of more like prime time as well. And uh, we'll see exactly where we go, man. This is very fantastic play by Skillis so far in this game. But third command set is coming up. Good economy there. Remember, the third Nexus is pretty slow for Skillis. And if you can't get in for counter damage, that is an issue. The tank there, man. I feel like Skillis could bust him and just win the game right now. This is where Hero just, like, runs forward, ignores the bunker, focuses down the tanks with the two Immortals, and you go, Oh my god, Killer Instinct! I don't think anyone except Hero would even think to do that. And I also think if the SCVs pull quick enough, you're going to get punished so bloody hard. So <laughs> I'm suggesting crazy ways of finishing the game right now, but I don't think it's necessary. As long as you just hold the probe key down in Skillis' shoes, you're going to be good. He gets the Raven! Oh, he gets the Raven! Great pickoffs here. Skillis is showing poise, calm, and determination right now. And that is getting me a little bit randy, guys. I'm getting a little bit excited. Because uh, that's a, a very good way to start the series. On the other hand, it's game one in the best of five. But uh, we're not in the best of seven series range yet. And uh, obviously a little bit of a rough game one for Maru. On the other hand, he leaned into heavy aggression, looking for mistakes from his opponent, which is what you like to do as the favorite. If you think, ah, I might just get an easy win, just apply pressure. He's going to be more nervous than I am. Much more pressure on his shoulders. We'll just see, see what mistakes he makes. Didn't work out for Maru, but Maru now is going to do what Maru does best. Let's turtle up on three bases, wait for those upgrades to finish, can keep building tanks, add the Vikings. And he's very good with his tank Viking control. Phoenix Colossus, if you can win the Phoenix versus Viking war, is going to be great. But if you lose a few Phoenix to like, you know, the Vikings picking them off, the Marines, suddenly your Colossus are exposed. Oh, look at that though. Grabs the Cyclone and two Vikings. He says, third base, you want to take your third base, mate? Nah. -uh. Oh, good save, Maru! Get seven SCVs, but no, the Metamac actually gets shot down. I was about to praise Maru for such a dangerous, ballsy move, but he ends up losing seven SCVs in the Metamac and one on the ground. Oh, Skillis is on fire right now, and Maru is uh, definitely not feeling too good about this situation. He lost his Raven, so right now he's scanning. Like, oh, where, where's the Observer? Where's the Observer? I can actually see. Guess what, guys? There is no Observer. There's not even one on this map. Skillis has taken a fourth. He's got plus one charge Templar Archive. So he's going to add Zealot Arc onto this army, which really rounds the style out. Oh, no! Skillis does a doo-doo! Skillis' first doo-doo of the day, guys. Accidentally rallying the Colossus into its death. That is a bummer. Three Colossus is a, a sort of magic number. And Maru says, okay, all right, I might only still be mining on two bases, but he's got a very powerful, what appears to now be a two base all-in. He never added add-ons on these barracks. He's doing a mass tank all-in. He's not actually building workers for this third. Careful, careful, Skillis. That is a giant army right now. And that's an SCV pool. That's a boy pool. I don't know if Skillis realizes that this is a boy pool, guys. Oh man, he needs to do nothing but make zealots and archons right now and try to wear this push down. But Skillis, oh no, no, watch out, watch out, Skillis. Whoa, he flies into Maru's army. But Maru catching him out of position. This is terrible for Skillis because he's out of position. You need to be in front of this push. If the tanks get around you, oh man, who who off a 3cc build pulls, build pulls the boys at this point? Maru, he's in a desperate position. But after getting the Colossus, this actually, now he gets an amazing tank spot. Another Colossus pops out to its death. Maru might just be turning this game around. Skillis has to jump on this army, but this is the perfect setup for Maru. Beautiful spread of tanks and bio, and Maru clutching what appears to be a, a winning position from the jaws of defeat. I mean, the core of expensive units survive, but Skillis loses his natural, and he's got to be annoyed. I mean, you can see on his face he's looking a little bit disappointed there with himself. 
That slip up in map vision. He just did not expect Maru to move out. He's been all over him. He's going to try and break the tank position. Doesn't have enough zealots to break the tank line on the left side. Even the turrets here at the Vikings. Oh my lord. Maru, you absolute scary monster, you. He says, bad start, lose Raven, worse start, lose eight SCVs on the third. I'm sorry, say my name, I'm Maru. And it still takes game one despite all of that adversity. GG, well played. All right, guys, going into game two, Skillis in the top left side, representing Team Liquid. He's going to come in with an immediate probe scout, but doesn't get to block the barracks in time. This map's just a bit too big for that, and Maru immediately pulls an SCV and does fend him off. Now, Maru did some very nice moves in that last game. Um, I think the big problem was the lack of the Observer, which we'd kind of mentioned, and I think losing the third Colossus, basically, let me explain what happened. I think Skillis, we've all done that, where you rally a Robo to one of your Robo units or across the map because you think there's an Observer, you know, you're rallying, you forget the rally points over there. Colossus kind of derps in, maybe you give a shift command or something like that, and your Colossus walks to its death, and that's jolting because if you're playing as Skillis, you have many times played against the gods like Maru. Made it competitive, being close, looked like you could take him out. And then, you know, they've put you in a position where you've made some mistakes. They haven't. They've kept playing good, good, good peak Starcraft. You've made some mistakes that slipped away from you. So you make a mistake like that. And I'm telling you, his uh, tournament life flashed before his eyes a little bit. And he lost map control with those Phoenix, right? And that was the big issue there. He was relying on those Phoenix for map control. If he got in front of that army, he could have slowed that siege up a lot. And Skillis was just hitting 8 gate charge at Archon production. If he gets two more rounds of Zealots, cuts off the reinforcement with about 10 Zealots, gets ready to flank the tanks, uses the Colossus, the Phoenix, the Archons to stutter step, slows down the push. By the time Maru gets in a threatening position in range of a base, you know what happens? Skillis pulls the trigger. Zealots come in from the, surround, from the flank. Uh, you got Archons, two Immortals, two Colossus. Even losing that Colossus shouldn't have made a difference. But Siege Tank pushes, their weakness is getting across the map and getting sieged up in an actual good position. And Maru kind of got that for free. Also took out a Colossus and a bunch of Phoenix as well. And that, of course, is something that Skillis is going to be a little bit triggered by. Speaking of which, oh, he builds a Twilight and he accidentally has the probe on the wrong side. If his probe was down here, it would have popped out on this side. But having it on the back, he's trapped a probe, doesn't want to waste the gas and the building time. So he's just one probe down now. And this is, of course, why mentality is so strong in StarCraft. And a lot of people, they look at guys who are coming up, whether it be a Skillis or someone who's a Trigger in Canada, a bunch of these players, and they go, man, sometimes they're just grinding and just doing, you know, rather straight up plays over and over again. And shouldn't they just be cheesing every time? And what you got to realize is you need so much experience dancing in the macro game and the straight up game with the best players in the world to really close that gap. If you're a rank 15 player, getting rank one involves you doing this dance. So I actually think Skillis is just going to try and stay calm now. He's going to keep playing his game. He's going two gate blink. And no, you know what? No Robo just yet. Let's see what happens when he hits 100 gas. It'd be kind of crazy to skip Robo. Okay, he's going to build it in the wall. Yeah. Two gate blink Robo for now. Quite possibly four gate blink could come in. So what I'm, I've got my eyes on is just how Skillis maintains his mentality. Because he's, he's, he's woken up. He's playing against Maru. He needs to bring out his peak form at the start of his practice day. It's not ideal conditions for him against an obviously unideal opponent. Let's see how he navigates. Hellion does drive in for Maru. Maru's going to get one in with that Hellion. Get a scout off. If he can get a probe or two, that's a big bonus. And Skillis will lose one probe. And I don't think he loses another, does he? Yeah, one probe's fine. But the scout is off. Of course, Maru sees the Twilight. I don't know if he saw the probe trapped in the prison. On the plus side, this guy basically is on permanent smoker. That's there what happens when the division in your company gets closed and uh, somehow you're on the payroll and, uh, and they don't actually know. So this guy shows up to work every day, sits down, occasionally shows up to a meeting and just nods and smiles. Nobody knows what he does. And he's hoping nobody asks too many questions because it's a sweet gig, mate. Tanks are on the way. I uh, imagine a Raven starts up, second barracks, and a third barracks. So Widowmine drop into Raven tank. Very, very standard play, guys. Very just straight up. And this is going to be Blink into Colossus. All right. Australia lo used to love this. Uh, he was one of the best in the world. At it. You don't see it too, too often from the top pros. The two base Colossus into a third. It's very low unit count. But if he can shut down the medevac, that'll be good. Oh, the Widowmine actually fired on the probe that went in the gas. He blinks forward. Maru! Okay, guys, Maru had a bad early game last game, and he just got shut down there. He didn't kill a single unit. The only probe that went down uh, was, of course, a different one on the other side of the map, I believe. It was the, the scouting probe earlier in this game. The Adept's there at the front. He's doing a very straight-up Raven tank play, but if that Raven gets caught, or if he takes some damage to the Blink Stalkers now, 
He's, he's going to be in a bit of bother. And uh, the Raven is going to go across and try and harass the top side. Third Nexus on the way. Skillis is going to go for the triangular base. And uh, yeah, Maru, Maru, definitely, you can see, I, I feel like there's this weird shift. I've been talking about Maru being absolutely just, you know, uh, somebody you can't throw off their game. And then ever since that World Championship Finals, I feel like we've seen odd mistakes from him here and there. And, uh, and and not just mistakes, but him looking a bit tilted by it. Let's go to Skillis' camera. Does he catch that Raven crossing on the north? Oh, I don't think he saw it, guys. Oh, he hit a supply block and he was distracted. He was distracted by a supply block, I believe, guys. So the Raven crosses into the main without him really seeming to notice. But quick response. Doesn't lose a single probe would be great if he gets them all off gas. And he does. Doesn't lose a single probe. Nikita is looking tight, guys. Uh, I'm sure there's people who are doubting him after that uh, mistake in game one, but you know what? A man that slips up like that, maintains his cool, brings out a clean game two. Always impressed by it. On the other hand, Raven tank bio push out is always scary. There's only one siege tank with it, so it's not going to be... It's going to be more of like a mobility game for Maru, where it's like Raven auto turrets the main, and then your bio tries to multi-prong. One Colossus is out. No battery on the third yet. That's, that's what's got me a little worried right now. Stalkers, see the army come out. Yeah, he gets a marine or two, but not baiting a stim. And that's because stim isn't finished. Fourth and fifth barracks start up behind this. Battery's going down now. That observer pulls away. Oh, he's going to go for a Widow Mine drop, but he sees the sees the pervy boy watching him. Does manage to take that one down. Maru's going to go for a four mine drop. Those stalkers look like they might go south and intercept it. But Skillis changes his mind and moves north. But he's got good pylon spotters. He's got an observer down there as well. He may see that Widow Mind drop on the way. Raven's going to come back in the main base. Two stalkers. Can I, I think, three shot the new auto turret? Maybe it's four stalkers. Uh, three stalkers to do that. Either way, auto turret comes in. And this time it gets some damage. Nice. Okay, he gets four probes that time. Way better. He's going to come for it again. Raven's using up all of its uh, hit points here and energy. But Skillis is not really pulling away. He pulls to the mineral patch, but that's still in range. Total of six workers go down. Bio, they're coming in, and here comes the drop. But if, if Skillis shuts this down, he's good. Oh, he two shots it! He two shots it! Shuts down a four, four, four Widow Mine drop. The Raven is down to just 30 hit points on the left side, and he's chasing the Bio army down. He's got to be careful there. That's that, There is six Marauders. You don't want to chase that army down, Skillis. Get out of there. Oh god, Skillis is massively overextending. He's got more units joining. If the second Colossus gets there, he can fight this army. Maru. Maru might be making a mistake if he tries to jump on that. Maru's third command center is landed, guys. 57 workers for Skillis. 52 for Maru. Skillis with a bit more of an aggressive stance. Doesn't want to make the mistakes of the last game. He's got 8 gate charge on the way. No Templar archives just yet. Maru does a scan and lifts up. And I think Skillis, aware of that hole in his vision, is replacing it. Let's go to Skillis' camera here. Does he realize the drop's right there? It gets spotted. It gets spotted. Does he notice? Oh my god. Oh my god, he's gonna blink on it. He's gonna blink on it! Maru! Oh, a risky move! Loses a full medevac! Maru! I gotta say, Skillis' economy is nowhere near as big as it was in the last game. So he's still not got that big an economic advantage. And as a result, Maru's supply is still okay. But Maru can't be defending against a Colossus army. He's got the mobility advantage, but Skillis has the range advantage. Skillis, though, pushing right now. Zealots in the main base. It's going to be a base trade. Maru knows that his army loses head to head. So he's going to try and base trade it. But there's already Zealots in the main. His bio will come down and try to defend that. Concussive Shell's doing very well. They're great micro by Maru, but he's going to lose all of his bases very quickly. The question is, if no probes get out of the map, there's only one probe or two probes in the very top side that could maybe survive. The Stalker Colossus trying to get on top. Maru's trying to Doom Drop on the other side as well. The Zealots in the main seem to be cleaned up. Maru, you can tell how quickly he swapped this mode. Watch out for the Widow Mines! Oh, they take out a lot of these probes. The Zealots are trying to get together. He's trying to build immortals. If Skillis can keep his base alive, that would be massive. Both players trying to scramble together a defense here. I love the way Maru's pulling behind his production. The, the Prism's going to go down as well. The Robo will be going down. 35 probes have fallen. Skillis does have a little bit of money in the bank, but no Templar archives, and he's got 14, 1500 gas. If he could make Archons right now, they would be an absolute game winner. Force fields could be massive. He goes for the Guardian Shield, forces the Stim, picks off a lot of these units. There's still two Colossus. Oh, he moves a bit far forward with his Colossus. He's got to be careful. The Stalkers do take out the Vikings. They blink back, though, and that Bio running out of Stim. Bit of a misclick on the barracks. The Colossus do waste an attack there. The main base is going to go down on the other side. Maru is going to clear the main, but so is Skillis. We have a full-blown base trade on our hands. Problem for Skillis. He's lost almost all of his probes, whereas Orbital Command Centers are still flying away. Maru might be able to force a draw. He says, this game's gone to hell in a handbasket, but I might be able to force a draw. Who the hell knew when they saw Skillis versus Maru in a best of five to start today that it would be kicking off with these games like this? Who the hell 
thought that this would be what the games are looking like. This was meant to be a dominating uh, advantage for Maru in this series. But look, his command center is burning. Unfortunately for Skillis, no money for a Nexus rebuild. And that is the problem. He's going to recall there. He's got a probe mining. He's uh, As he loses this Nexus, he gets supply capped. And Maru's rebuilding SCVs right now. Let's look at these unit numbers. That Raven is sacred, guys. If that Raven can survive and land interference matrices, it can change the course of this game. Those eight Marauders are important units. These seven Stalkers are the only anti-air mobility as well for Skillis. Now, look at this. Maru's going to try and save this burning command center. Does he drop a mule to repair it, guys? How can you sleep while the command center is burning? It's a famous Australian song. And uh, it's going to burn down. This command center is taking a lot of damage as well. That drop on the left side. Pylon's doing a good job of spotting that. There's a single Stalker in here trying to stop Maru's mining. But Maru, guys, he didn't lose his depots. He's still got depots. He can he can drop a few mules and then build tons of marines. <gasps> Uh-oh. Now, recall is not ready for another... What is that? Like 50 seconds? Something like about 50 seconds. That command center is going to burn down. He saved the command center in the top. Command center in the bottom goes down. There's still two command centers. One of them has a Stalker on it killing the SCVs. This one's going to repair... Oh, he's getting in the main is Maru. Careful, you don't, want to, you don't want to throw any units away. Maru gets a single Zealot kill. He says, yes, a freebie. But he loses one Marine to the Colossus as well. And if he loses any of these units, he could be in trouble. I mean, if the Stalkers... The Colossus! No! Skillis loses a Colossus, but wait! Maru misclicked on a Zealot underneath it. He doesn't complete it. And he leaves all of his Marauders behind. Oh, no! I thought Skillis did the mistake, but that might have even been a purposeful bait. If we get to interview Skillis, we're going to ask him about that moment. You have to remind me, those watching live in Twitch chat, to ask him about that moment. That Because if he purposely moved the Colossus in his bait, that's 369 IQ, that is. That was uh, a very slick move. Now, Maru is building tanks. He's building bio. The problem is, guys, Skillis is supply blocked, and he's, he's trying to build two pylons, which means he can start rebuilding probes, but he's got to be careful. He's going to clean up this marine. Maru has a single drop that's just going to try to backstab and keep Skillis at home, and Skillis going across the map with some zealots and a stalker, but look at that. He's got a barracks wall off and a tank there, and he's going to try and float this command center into the main base. Oh my god. That's going to be great. Oh, dude, this is Mar Maru's playing this so smart. He's got more infrastructure. I still think Skillis has such a better army. He can recover. But if he doesn't find this base in the top, the double orbital is going to be huge. And there's nothing at home. Recall's available. But look at that drop now. What does he recall? It's the question. He's got a Colossus and some Stalkers, but losing two probes is rough. Losing three probes is very rough, guys. He only has enough money to build two probes right now. That medevac gets out of there. The Stalkers, they it's cleaning up the depots. Very important to get rid of that infrastructure. There's a third tank building. <laughs> Maru. I'm looking at Maru's face right now. That's what I'm most curious about. I'm like, I'm like, Maru, you dirty boy. Are you going to try? I mean, you can't really force a draw unless he unless he catches Skillis completely out of position. Skillis is leaving just two Stalkers, a Colossus, a Sentry, and a Zealot. I feel like if all the Marauders go over there, they can kill that, right? This base is a big problem. Skillis does not know about it, guys. He does not know about that base. The Barracks are going to try and wall the right side because he feels if the Zealots can get in, then he's in trouble. The tanks moving forwards is nice. Skillis does not have a lot of economy. Only three probes. Losing those extra workers is such a nightmare. Maru is supply block right now. He's trying to build depots so he can start SCV production. But I'm telling you, that base on the top is huge. And he sees three probes mining. Maru's like, hmm. I have six workers. You only have three. I have the economic advantage. <laughs> oh, careful. Skillis does not want to lose those units. And there's no way to break this. There's just no way in. Skillis needs to check his corners right now, guys. And if he doesn't, and that base survives up there, that's a problem. The, the real problem is we thought this was going to burn down. Skillis has assumed that burnt down because he, he knew he set it on fire. He's like, yeah, yeah, it was too chaotic. He's forgotten about it. He's like, no, this is the only thing that can exist is this one command center. The observer has seen everything that's going on. He can click the siege tank and see where it can reach to. Now, here we go. One marauder and a bunch of marines. He's going to try and get two probes and leave. Oh, Maru. He gets one. One, two, three. Three probes. Four probes. Five probes, six! He gets them all! He kills all six probes! He almost loses the drop for it, but he kills six probes. Maru, you foul genius, you dark master of the base trade. Unless there's a warp prism, Skillis can't do much about this, can he? If he has a warp prism, maybe he can get in there and punish you for throwing army away. But Maru right now, with his corner base, is channeling his inner sewer mermaid and saying, you know what? I've got a corner base. I've got that up. I've created... The wall, we're repurposing the uh, barracks as a wall off, which is a very smart utilization of what tools he has. And he's building a third command center. 
He's like, yep, I mean, I gotta play the long game. He's like, dude, I'm not gonna move out with siege tanks, no way. And now, 17 workers versus three. Oh man, this is crazy, guys. Skillis has outplayed Maru in two early games in a row. And remember what Artosis and Tasteless said for many years, you know? If you're ahead versus Maru, you're even. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Yeah, if, and if you're even, you're behind. And if you're behind, you're already dead. You might as well tap out. It's something to that effect. And I, I really do feel like Maru has a, a gear, a flick that switches in his head where he's like, I'm playing comeback style. And he suddenly just becomes more patient and calm and collected than any other StarCraft player. It's funny because you see Raynor and Dark in these situations and they always look like they pulled off something naughty and like you can tell they get a real joy out of it when they win from this scenario. But uh, Maru, I feel like he's like, no, nah, it's just normal StarCraft. Yeah, try to win base <gasps> Single Marine backstab. But that's going to go down now, guys. These two stalkers are about to kill a full medevac with SCVs in it. Oh no. Maru trying to do the sneaky sneak. Now that's going to reveal that he's got a corner base, guys. Oh, Maru! He flies! He's trying to ferry the SCVs back from the, the corner base. Now, Skillis doesn't know that was filled with SCVs unless he heard the SCV dying noises when it went down, which you'd have to be really focused to, to realize. Colossus going to go after the tank. Oh, Maru goes for the Colossus. He gets one. He gets one. One of the tanks goes down. But dude, Maru, look at that army. And Skillis, I think, realizing the size of this force, he knows he can't let Maru take an expansion. Ma oh, man. Maru, you foul god. Too experienced, no matter how chaotic the situation. And uh, Maru, <laughs> GG, well played. This man is really giving me a heart attack today. Alright, let's go. This man does not believe in dying, guys. He believes the coffin is just a nice place where you lay down for a minute, and then when they're lowering you into the grave, he punches his way and says, What are you idiots doing? I was just having a nap. Maru, in the top left side, representing Onside Gaming. Apparently a practicer of self-necromancy. Just refusing to die, refusing to give up, and finding ways to snipe his opponent's economy. Skillis down here in the bottom right side. Like I said, Skillis only had so many stalkers in that game. And, um... Yeah, he only had so many stalkers, so he couldn't really, like, have a lot of stalkers on the front and at home at the same time. And the retake of the main base by floating his production back to his own main was just a very smart move. Pro, excuse me, guys. Probe is going to get some very good damage done, and that's going to delay the barracks building time by about two seconds. That's actually very effective. Slows down the Reaper from coming to your side of the map, and uh, does, does stack up. If you can now regen the shields of Skillis, you can do very well. Now, i got to say, guys, Skillis is, is awesome. Skillis is a, is a badass. He's playing very good early games. He's looking great. And he's actually outplaying Maru in the early game. It's only in very deep water in that situation, which you almost never get to in your regular pro practice games, where Skillis is kind of getting outshone by Maru's ridiculous level of experience and creativity in these situations. Now, Maru has actually pulled off gas, guys. He's playing three racks, right? Pretty sure the, the pulling workers off gas is for... Or three command center? No, no, yeah. Looks like a three barracks uh, build. So he's doing a super crisp three racks. And this is one of the shorter rush distance maps in the pool. So I believe this build leads to an incredibly quick marine timing, if memory serves me. Uh, Reaper is running around as well. Start gates on the way. Ooh, that's not good for Skillis, guys. I mean, it can work out, don't get me wrong. But if your opponent goes super mineral focused mass marine push, uh, you can end up in a lot of doo-doo. On the other hand... The fact that there's no third barracks is making me one of the two things. Number one. Yeah, it's a, oh my god, it is a third CC. Okay, Stargate's totally fine then. Never mind. <laughs> That's a third command setter, guys. Maru is saying, you know what? These early games haven't been going too well for me. But when the game drags on, I do well. Let's let's go straight to that point. Let's go straight to three command centers and play it from there. And that's a very big change up. <clears throat> We'll see how Skillis is at, at scouting this. If Skillis goes Phoenix and then hides them at home, that's really bad for him. If he goes Phoenix straight across the map, scouts, that's good. The problem is, information's denied. So if we look at this from Skillis's camera, Glory can't see table. what's in there. He has no, no real tells. Did he just kill the Urubu guys? Where'd the Urubu go? I think he just killed the Urubu. Does that show up as a kill if you kill the Urubu? For those who don't know, the curse of the Urubu is 100%. Uh, if you kill the Urubu on these maps, it's the little critter, it's the little bird that hovers around near the natural. 
you always lose. Um, this happened just the other day in the weekly cup. Kua did it, and then he basically was in a winning position versus uh, Beyond, and then chucked the chucked the game away. Massive, massive throw, and that's what we call the curse of the Urubu. I believe Reina did it in that game five versus Oliveira. Uh, it's, it's happened a lot of times. I, I, at this point, it's not just superstition. I really do believe if you inflict harm on the critters on the map, it comes back to bite you. So on the other hand, I don't see a critter on this side either. So maybe both players uh, did it. Or maybe Skillers killed it on both sides of the map. Phoenix are going to fly out now. The Adepts did kill the Reaper, which is nice. Maru doesn't really know what he's up against. The problem is if you're going three command center into third barracks, you've got plenty of Marines anyway. And he's going to go double engineering bay at the same time. Oh, man. The sheer amount of bio he's going to come across the map with is huge. Oh, here we go. Phoenix going to fly around. He sees sees third command in a double eBay and Skillis. What's your answer? I think there's an argument. You don't try to catch up in upgrades. I know a lot of people would go, obviously Colossus here, because he's already got the Robo and the full gas. Obviously a third base. These are no-brainers. You've you got to do that just to try to keep up with the economy. The question is, do you play single forge or do you try to play double forge and keep up in the upgrades? I think you stick to single forge and you just get more splash damage and more units because I think having the tech is more important as Protoss against Terran. And he's getting a few SCV kills, which is nice, but look at that. Maru's moving out with a bit of a YOLO, guys. He says, yeah, Stim and a bunch of Marines. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's just go across the map. This, there's two sentries, three Phoenix, three Adepts. There's not many units. They can defend the natural. I don't think they can defend the third. And this build is a mixture of greed and aggression. This is very hard to stop. The Phoenix don't have any lifts, man. They've got one lift that just ticked over. There's no fourth Phoenix. The Immortal's not even out. I don't know. I mean, this is not a very solid Marine ball, but that third base is looking mighty exposed. He's trying to bait the Stim out of Maru and then get out of there. He's got force fields. Maru can't really chase him. Good play by Skillis so far. That Stim will wear off and there's no meta back here. Losing the pylon, not the end of the world. Colossus has started. Guardian Shield's pretty nice as well. If he can get back to the battery, he will be okay. And it looks like he'll save his third base. Does need to build some pylons. But actually, third Nexus finishes, which is uh, basically two pylons. Gives you 15 supply. Skillis handles his defense pretty well. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, Kastika. Sorry, guys. Skillis chases too far there. Moves too far out. And Maru is making mountains out of molehills. Um... Uh, and you might be like, what? Normally that means when someone's blowing something out of proportion. Yeah, he just blew this marine pressure, which is meant to be a poke out of proportion. When you've got a third landed and 1-1 one, one finishing at 6 minutes 20, you're not also supposed to be able to go over there and mess up the Protoss player and kill an immortal, two sentries and a phoenix. Look, he's traded better than the Protoss while being obscenely greedy. Protoss answer. Skillis says, well, I gotta, I mean, I gotta go balls to the wall. I'm not coming back playing straight forward standard. I know your tech's very late. You're not going to have like factories for a while. I'm going to take a fourth base immediately. Clever play. He's got a second Colossus. He's got that uh, extended thermal lance, the big daddy pills uh, on the way. And where's the factory? Where's the starport, guys? It does not exist until only now. The first two medevacs are very late, but the amount of marine marauder is huge. Now, Maru could go for a double drop into the natural and then stim down the bottom with the rest of his army. That's a pretty pretty well executed, you know, tried and true way of attacking. The big problem for Skillis, plus one and charge are miles away. Twilight, nowhere near in sight. He's got three Phoenix only for air control. So he's got to just have his Colossus in the right position and he's got to do that off one pervy boy, which I think he should pull home right now to a more central position. But he's not doing it. Uh-oh. I, I, I honestly don't think he can track this army well enough to be in the right position unless he brings the Observer home. He's using the Phoenix very well. Can Skillis get back in this game? He lost a lot of his valuable units earlier. He sees the drop there. Is he going to drop on top? Maru, you savage! He's dropping Marauders on top of the Colossus and the battery's not ready on the third. There's no shield battery. He says raw numbers, determination. And of course, the desire for victory does not leave me. Maru, an absolute savage there. That first marine timing, really awkward to deal with because you, you scout the greediest build in the world and then he also hits you with a savage marine timing. Bloody hard to deal with that one on such a short map. You give him a bigger map, I think Skillis does fine. But on Babylon, it's a tough one. Maru here with a flawless 3-0 uh, scoreline, but a much more muddled series. Very difficult to earn this 3-0. Skillis, hats off to him for making him work hard for it, but at the end of the day, Maru stands strong.